What up y'all and welcome to the first video of our dungeon mod tutorial series. This series is going to cover how to create a dungeon mod in the creator kit. In this video we're going to build a small section of our dungeon and add a dungeon entrance to overland. Then when we interact with that dungeon entrance we're going to load into the dungeon level that we made. And with that being said, let's get started. We're going to start off this video by creating a new dungeon mod. This is going to be the first mod on this channel that we don't use the empty mod template, so it'll give us a chance to explore the other templates in the creator kit. Then we're going to be replacing the default dungeon level that comes with the dungeon template with our own custom dungeon level, and then we'll start building our dungeon in the creator kit. Then we're going to add some torches and braziers to our dungeon to give it some lighting, and we're going to add a dungeon entrance to overland so the player can enter our dungeon. Then we'll finish our mod by uploading it to CurseForge, then we're going to download and test it in Steam to make sure it's working in-game. To create a dungeon mod first, we're going to create a new dungeon mod. So we're going to select the Create Mod button, and then New Dungeon Mod. Then we're going to give our mod plugin a name, and then when that looks good, press the Create Mod button. And if we go into our Mods folder, we'll see it created a couple folders for us. So first we're going to check out this Maps option. So if we double click this, we'll see that the Creator Kit made a dungeon level for us. So if we double click this, then if we load at this level, we'll have a fully playable dungeon that we can explore and kind of get a feel for how dungeons were made in the base game. Now we're going to want to make our dungeon from scratch, so I'm actually going to delete this and then create a new level. So to do this, I'm going to create a new empty level and then close out of the creator kit, rename the empty level to have the same name as this one, and then delete the original. To create a new level, I'm going to right-click into the content browser and then select the level option. And it doesn't matter what I name it, so I'm just going to keep it as new world. Then we're going to rename these in the file explorer, so an easy way to find that is we're going to right click one of these levels and then select the show in explorer option. Then I'm going to make sure everything's saved and then exit out of the creator kit. So next in the file explorer I'm going to copy the name of this original dungeon and then delete it. So I'm going to right click, select rename, then control C to copy. And then I'll just select it and then press delete. Then I'm going to rename the new level I made, so I'm going to right click and select rename and then control V to paste the original name. Now all the other data from this mod is gonna reference our new level instead of the old one. So now we just gotta relaunch the creator kit and start making our dungeon. Then once you open the creator kit, you should now have a new empty level with the same name as the original dungeon. Now there is a chance the name doesn't automatically change, but as soon as you open up this level that's in your mods folder, it should automatically update. First step in making our dungeon is we want to add some lighting so we can see inside the level. So we're going to do this by adding a lighting level called Overland Global Sky. This level can be found by going to Content, Levels, Overland, and then Overland Global Sky. We're going to add lighting by adding this Overland Global Sky to the Levels window. If you don't see the Levels window up here, you can find it by selecting Window, and then Levels. Then we can drag and drop the Overland Global Sky from our Content Browser into the Levels window. Then to make sure the lighting is always visible, I'm going to select the Overland Global Sky in the Levels window, then I'm going to right click it, go down to Change Streaming Method, and then make sure this level is always loaded. Now before we start adding assets to our dungeon, let's first consult our sacred text. This Wizards Forge Bible is going to be a list of commandments based on mistakes that I made so you don't have to. This commandment, thou shalt always check what level you have selected before adding assets to your dungeon. That's because all assets added to the level will be added to the currently selected level. I want to make sure all of my dungeon assets are in this persistent level, so I want to make sure this is always selected whenever I add an asset to the dungeon. Going back to the creator kit, I'm going to double click this persistent level to make sure it's selected, and we'll add in our assets. This first blueprint I'm going to add is going to be this BP Castle Builder Floor and Roof. This can be found in Content, Environment, a Castle Dungeon, and Blueprint. Then we'll take it from the Content Browser and then drag and drop it into our level. First thing I'm going to do is reset the location of this floor. So I'm going to come over to the Location section and then this little arrow key next to it says Reset to Default. I'm going to select this to reset all the locations to zero. Next up, I'm going to set how big I want this first floor to be. So I'm going to come over to the details and length and width. I'm going to set these both to 5. So I want this floor to have a length of 5 and then a width of 5. Next up, I'm going to add a player start. This is going to let us set where the player spawns in when they load into our dungeon. To find this, I'm going to select the place actors window. And then in the search bar, I'm going to search player start. Then I'm going to find the player start and I'm going to drag and drop it into our level. Then you can move your player start to wherever you want your player to load into your level. An important thing to note, this light blue arrow that's poking out of the red arrow is going to be the direction your player will face when they load into the level. 
Now if we load into our level, we'll load in at the player start, and then we'll be able to navigate around our dungeon. For our floor set, we're going to add in our castle walls. We can do this by using the BP Castle Builder Wall Blueprint. That's also located in Content, Environment, Castle Dungeons, and then Blueprint. So we'll select from the Content Browser, and then we'll drag and drop it into our level. And you're going to move your Castle Wall Blueprint to wherever you want it in your dungeon. And I'm going to duplicate this wall and place it on the other side. So with this wall selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key, then drag it to the other side of the floor. Now these walls are going to be single sided by default, so if you look at it from the other side you'll be able to see right through it. So to fix this we're going to go down to the details section and then select it double sided. Now we're going to do the same thing for our third wall, I'm going to hold the alt key and then drag and drop to make a duplicate. Now since this wall is going to be between two other walls we don't need the start and end columns. So we can go down to the details panel and then deselect start trim and then deselect end trim. Then with this wall selected, I'm going to press the E key to trigger the rotation widget and then rotate it 90 degrees. Then I'm going to press the W key to get back to the move widget, then I'm going to move this wall to be where I want it. Now in order to make our dungeon as even as possible, I want these walls to be intersecting exactly in the middle. Now since this is grid based, you can use math to figure out the exact coordinates you want, but what I usually do is I eyeball it so it looks close, and then round it up to the nearest 50th. So I have negative 200 for my X, and then 50 for my Y. This will be helpful because if you decide you want to resize your dungeon, you can just select the wall and then add another segment to have it fit perfectly. So if I switch segment count from 4 to 5, I'll have it intersecting exactly in the middle and fill in that wall. Then we can finish off this room by selecting this wall, holding the Alt key, and then dragging that fourth wall where we want it to go. Then if we load into our level, we'll spawn in at the player start, and then we'll have these four walls surrounding us. These walls have collision by default, so all we need to do is place them where we want them, and then they're good to go. Now to finish off this room, we're going to add a roof. So I'm going to select the floor and hold that Alt key, and then drag and drop a duplicate to the top of the level. And then with the roof selected, we'll go down to the details panel, and then we'll select the roof option. Then you can adjust the location of the roof so that the columns for your wall and then the columns for your roof intersect each other perfectly. And then next up for this room, we're going to add lighting. All of the lighting right now is being provided by the Overland Global Sky Level, so if this is disabled, our level will be completely black. To add our lighting, I'm going to use this BP underscore torch blueprint located at Content, Gameplay, Blueprints, and Universal. So we'll drag it from the Content Browser up into our level. Then I'm just going to rotate this torch and then place it where I want to. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and then move it to be flush against the wall. Now if we disable this Overland Global Sky, we'll see what our dungeon looks like with this torch lighting. Now there's a lot of options you can change to customize your torch, but for now I'm just going to disable this shadow. So I'm going to go to the search bar, type in cast shadows, and then I'm going to scroll down to the torch, point light, and then deselect this cast shadow option. Then with this torch selected, I'm going to hold the alt key, and then I'm going to drag and drop this new torch where I want it in my level. Then you can toggle this Overland Global Sky Level on and off to see how your lighting's going to look in-game. Now I'm going to repeat these steps to add torches to the other walls. So with this selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key, then make a duplicate, rotate this duplicate 90 degrees, and then go back and place it where I want to on my wall. Now that I have the lighting from my wall set, I'm going to add some torches to the ceiling. To do this, I'm going to select a torch from the wall and then create a duplicate copy. Then the details panel, I'm going to scroll down until I find the setup option, and then I'm going to choose what static mesh I want it to show as. So I'm going to use this brazier and then bring it up towards the ceiling. Now I don't want my torch just to be floating in the air, so I'm going to use this BP underscore chain blueprint located at content, environment, castle dungeons, and then blueprint. So I'm going to drag and drop it into the level. And then I'm going to press the E key to go into rotate mode, and then rotate this 90 degrees. And then I'll just move my chain and my torch until they're lined up on this pillar. Now since this torch is on the ceiling, I want to have a spotlight that's going to shine straight down. So I'm going to select the torch, and then come to the details panel, and then I'm going to search spotlight. Then I'm going to find in torch, light spotlight, and then make sure the spotlight is enabled. Then I want to duplicate the ceiling light, so I'm going to select the chain and the torch. Then with these both selected, I'm going to hold the alt key, and then move these both where I want them to go.
Now if you want to adjust the length of your chain, you can see this white line going through the middle of the chain. If you select the white cube at the very bottom, you can use this move widget to make your chain longer or shorter. And then same as the walls, duplicate these torches to cover your entire room. Now in order to see our dungeon lighting when we play into our level, we're going to set the Overland Global Sky to Blueprint only. So I'm going to select it in the content browser, right click it, go to change streaming methods, and then set it to Blueprint. Now if we load into our level, we'll see our dungeon lighting, and we're able to navigate around our dungeon. Next thing we're going to do is add an exit for our dungeon. So we're going to find this BP underscore world teleport blueprint located at content, gameplay, blueprint, triggers. Then we'll drag and drop it into our dungeon level. And then we'll drag it up a little bit so that the player will be able to see it. Now if we load into our level, if we walk towards that exit, we'll get an interact that'll tell us where we're going to exit to. Now that we have our dungeon level started, the next thing we're going to do is add a dungeon entrance to Overland so the player can enter our level. To do that, we're going to open the Overland level, which is located at Content, Levels, Overland, and then the Overland level. Hogwarts Legacy's Overland is separated into different sections called tiles. Each of these tiles are stored in their own sub-level that we can use the Overland level to load without having to load the entire Overland map. This screenshot with all the tile names can be found on the CurseForge website, and I'll link that in the description below. The first thing I'm going to do is load the Overland Global Sky level so I can see inside of my level. So I'm going to go over to the Levels window and I'm going to type in Overland, then Overland Global, I'm going to right click and then press Load, then I'm going to go down to Overland Global Sky, right click this and press Load as well. Now I know I want my dungeon entrance to be near the Hamlet Upper Hawksfield, and I know that's on tile HNAS, so I'm going to go to the Levels window and in the search bar I'm going to type in HN underscore AS. Now this tile is separated into a bunch of different sublevels, so we can pick and choose what we want to load. The first one we're going to do is this overall HNAS, so we're going to click this, then right click it, then press the load button. This HN underscore AS level will load in the majority of the level, and we can load in these various sublevels to get more detail. So in order to make sure I don't put my dungeon entrance where there's already an asset, I'm going to use this HN underscore AS render level to load in the rocks and various small assets. Then I'm going to load in this HN underscore feature Hamlet level so I can see the buildings in Upper Hogsfield. You know, if you ever get too far away from your level and you can't see it anymore, you can find an asset in the World Outliner, select it, and then press the F key to navigate back to that asset. Once you've found the spot you want to place your dungeon entrance, we're going to go to the Place Actors window, and then type in BP underscore dungeon entrance, and then drag and drop this into our level. Then when you have that dungeon entrance placed where you want it, you'll select it in the level, then go down to the details panel and then in dungeon name, select the drop down and then select the dungeon you want. So we're going to do this WFM dungeon 01 underscore dungeon map. Then when everything looks good, we'll press that register dungeon button. Now, if you want to make sure that worked correctly, you can go to your mod edits to SQL file located at Hogwarts Legacy Creator Kit, Phoenix Game, Mods, Mod Name, and Content, and then make sure your mod edit.sql file has insert into dungeon entrances with the correct dungeon name and an XYZ coordinate. Then once you have that registered, we're going to navigate back to our mods folder, then we're going to select this data folder, and then this dungeon 01 dungeon table. Then in this dungeon table, we're going to set what our dungeon entrance is going to look like. So to do that, we'll find this dungeon type, select this drop down, and we can select either of these options. I'm going to make a castle dungeon, so I'm going to use this castle dungeon A, and then press the save button to save that data table. Now this mesh might not update automatically when you view it from the viewport, but if you press play and view the level while it's loaded, it should work. And my computer isn't powerful enough to play the Overland level in the Creator Kit, so I'm going to finish off this video by uploading the mod to CurseForge and then testing it in-game. Before we upload our mod, let's set the name for our dungeon. This is going to be the name that appears when the player approaches the dungeon before they enter it. We'll do this by opening the Localization Text Editor, so we'll find that by selecting Window, scroll down to the bottom, and then select Localization Text Editor. Here for the ID, we're going to type in the name of our dungeon level, so I'm just going to paste it. I'm going to have WFM underscore dungeon 01 underscore dungeon map. And then for localization, we're going to type in how we want it to appear in game. So I'm going to name my dungeon the Wizard's Forge. Once that looks good, you're going to press the apply changes button. 
And finally, we'll finish off this mod by uploading it to CurseForge. So I'm going to select this Upload Mod button, and then select Mod. I'm going to have WFM underscore Dungeon underscore zero one. And then this mod name is going to be how the mod appears in Steam. So I'm going to set the Wizard's Forge. And then we'll set our mod image. So we're going to make sure it's a square image, at least 400 pixels, and under 5 megabytes. For categories, I'm going to set Dungeons. And then for Mod Summary, I'm just going to put New Custom Dungeon. And then Mod Description, Initial Upload for the Wizard's Forge Dungeon. Then when that looks good, select the Upload Mod button. Once your mod's finished cooking, you'll open the game and then select the Play Mods button. Then you'll navigate to the Library tab and tab down twice until you find the Uploaded tab. This will show all the mods that you uploaded from the Creator Kit, so it'll show all the mods that I have published and the mods that I'm still working on. So I'll scroll down until I find the Wizard's Forge, I'll select this, and then I'll make sure to install it. Another mod I like to download are these skip intro mods by EsquilWB. They'll let you create a character and then skip to a part of the game where you can leave the castle and then navigate to your dungeon. Then I'll navigate to the enable mod section and then select create new character. From here I'm going to select the skip intro Slytherin house, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and then select the wizard's forge. Then I'll press the pause button and begin a new game. And then if we navigate to where we put our dungeon entrance in game, we can see our dungeon text, so I see the Wizard's Forge, Then, if we interact with this, it will enter our dungeon. Thanks for watching and that's me for this video. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and let me know what kinds of videos and tutorials you'd like to see next, and also what kind of things you'd like to see in this dungeon. Wizard's Forge Mods, out.